Welcome to Badlands Rack Attack, another new episode. I am your host, Blake Van Tussenbrook, and I'm coming to you from the Rack Attack studio here in Sandy, Utah. It is June, and it is hot outside. I'm talking like crack an egg and cook it on the sidewalk hot. I know that's like a cliche, but I think you could do it right now. We're triple digits here in Utah. It's hotter in other places, and uh, I'm actually heading to southern Utah soon in a couple days. I'm supposed to hit like 114 down there. Uh, I'm going to play a little golf. Thought I was going to relax, but mostly probably just going to sweat. So um, it's a scorcher. Here's a tip for you. Stay hydrated. You never heard that before, have you? Uh, for this episode of Badlands Rack Attack, we're keeping it super simple. I'm not going to go off on 50 different tangents, 10 different subjects. We're keeping it simple. We had a comment come in from Colin Stoltzifus uh, from the last episode of Rack Attack. He said, would love to see you break down the different bino cases. I might get one, but I'm not sure which is best for me. First of all, might is a word for losers. Either do or do not. There is no might. I think that's a famous <clears throat> saying from somewhere. Uh, I might have changed it just a little bit. But the Badlands Bino case is the way to go. Like we say, often imitated but never duplicated. We have lots of options for you, and we know uh, the more education we can give on the cases and how they're different, why they're different, the better it is for you when you're making those important optics protection decisions. Just remember, Badlands Unconditional Lifetime Warranty, last Bino case you're ever going to have to buy. So we're gonna go through those in depth. That's gonna be the focus of this episode today. Um, I'm not even gonna rant and rave about anything today. I'm gonna keep it positive. We do have a new segment that I'm excited to debut. This came from an idea in a comment on last episode of Rack Attack from Nathaniel Melton. He said he'd love to see some Badlands products that never made it to the shelf. So we're gonna debut today a new segment called the Badlands Graveyard, where we're going to show you products now and again that uh, made it a little bit of ways through the design process, maybe sampled them, tested them a little, but at some point along the way, they, uh, they just died for one reason or another. So um, should we be showing you old dead ideas? I don't know. Do we, I, I make a lot of poor decisions here on Rack Attack, so hopefully this isn't one of them. These are all protected ideas, though, so don't get any... Uh, ideas about stealing our intellectual property. That's a legal term. You can look it up because I do. Um, so the Badlands Graveyard, the first product we're going to debut, I don't even know what it's called. I just found it in the warehouse in an old dusty box. Um, look at that beauty. It's all dirty even. See, I pulled it out of an old dirty box. Um, a lot of times we sample things in colors that uh, our factory has on hand. So this was never going to be a blue pack, but it was a very unique design. I think uh, kind of like a turtle shell almost was the idea around this. Um, it's kind of a semi-rigid hard case backpack, super simple, maybe a hydration pack or something like that. Um, again, pretty cool concept. Had one zipper, then kind of dropped wide open, had this netting on the inside. Um, kind of a cool net system on the inside that was done by hooks and uh, you could stuff something behind there again I this was before my time I don't know exactly why this thing died well I kind of can tell why it did it's it's fairly odd looking maybe it was a little bit obscure uh, some internal pockets internal organization um, but yeah look at that thing the Badlands tortoise shell backpack who knows, maybe you're going to blow up in the comments that you would buy 10 of these right now if we put them on the site. So we still have the pattern. We still have it. Maybe something gets resurrected from the Badlands graveyard because of you. That would be pretty cool, right? So that's the first product we're showing you. There's plenty of stuff in the graveyard. So uh, now and again, we'll bust that out for this new segment. Thought that would be fun. Thank you, Nathaniel Melton, for that great idea. Uh, we're going to send you some Badlands swag for giving us that great idea and for us uh, using it. So we'll get your information from you and uh, hook you up. With that being said, we're going to hop right into our comprehensive bino case breakdown. There are uh, a lot of styles just in our lineup alone. 
and um, shopping online or shopping in stores, uh, they might not have all of them. Uh, it might be hard to find all the information. So I'm going to go through them one by one. We have a lot of binoculars and rangefinders up here too. Obviously not every model on the market, there's way too many of those, but you'll start to see why it's hard for us to say when you give us a call if your binos or rangefinder will or won't fit. There are so many, it's hard to say what combo works in what. But we're going to try to give you somewhat of an idea. I'm going to start with the smallest Badlands bino case and work my way up. Just quickly touch on overall size and features and then uh, move on and get through this. Uh, most of these cases are going to be available in our mud color, our approach color, and our approach FX color. Not all of them are available in all colors, but most of them are. So you can uh, um, keep that in mind while we're going through those. First one here is the Bino C. Bino C, uh, that C stands for compact. It's going to be for your more co compact binoculars. Not quite as many features as some of the other cases. Um, real simple, it has our Badlands Zipno magnetic technology, our rare earth magnets that go all the way around the outer rim, completely dust tight, watertight seal. You can go back to season one of Rack Attack. We do a dunk test in one of these. Uh, we put Nate's phone inside of it, dunked it in a tank of water, swished it around, uh, came out completely dry. So watertight, dust tight, magnetic seal. Uh, one internal pocket zipped here, uh, great for storing uh, tags, uh, small phone, little things can go in there. All the cases when they hit your doorstep are going to come with the harness inside. They're all going to have our four point shoulder harness. Gives you four points of contact so you can really get that case adjusted exactly where you want it. Some carry it low, some people carry it high, but it's all personal feeling. Uh, breathable. Um, super comfortable, thin. Uh, we keep these thin so that if you want to wear them under a backpack, uh, you have two sets of shoulder straps on, but uh, you don't really feel this one because it's so thin and comfortable. So four point shoulder harness is going to come in each of these. Um, tethers, uh, we always recommend tethering your binoculars in at least on one side uh, for unforeseen circumstances. Uh, big jump, something catches it, rips it open, uh, belly crawling and you snag on something. You just never know. We can't guarantee against everything. Um, things happen in the field. Why not protect it? At least tether it in. Even with that tether on there, you can get your binos up to your face. Um, no problem. Plenty of stretch in there. Um, no back storage on this one, but it does have a nice breathable mesh. Uh, side um, daisy chain straps here for attaching accessories, maybe a rangefinder clip, something like that. Size wise on the Bino C, uh, this is a Vortex 10 by 42 Diamondback binocular. You can see that 10 by 42 uh, fits just fine. Not saying all 10, 10 by 42s are going to fit, uh, it's probably the biggest you're going to fit in there, but it's going to depend on model. This 10 by 42 Crossfire from Vortex does not really fit. Uh, it's, it's too tight to get that to work. So it's just going to depend on your model again. Some 10 by 42s are going to fit. Smaller than a 10 by 42, you're probably going to be just fine on your Bino C. All right. <laughs> I'm already tired and sweaty. How about you? Larry is. I can see him uh, behind the camera sweating bullets. So, um, but he's always sweaty. It's just in his nature. Uh, the next Bino case is the Bino Z. The Z stands for zipper. So well, maybe I should have gone with our Bino Mag first. But this is basically the Bino Mag, which has been around probably the longest in our Bino case lineup with a zipper. Uh, that's the only difference. Has the same side attachments, um, same size, same shoulder harness, internal pockets. You have a couple zippled, zippered, zippled, zippered pockets here. Uh, bigger pocket there, side entrance pocket right there. Um, a lot of storage, a lot of people slip their cell phone back there. And um, size wise on this one, again, 10 by 42s are money in here. This is gonna fit almost all 10 by 42s at this point. Uh, here's a Vortex Viper HD 10 by 50, one of their newer models of that. Um, plenty of space, you can see height wise. You could go even taller on that or with eye cups extended. You're still going to have plenty of space. That's the biggest bino we have here. This uh, new 10 by 50 Vortex Razor is actually a little taller. That one fits plenty big, even with eye cups extended. So 10 by 50, even bigger. This will even fit some of those new uh, bino rangefinder combos. Uh, again, just depends on your model. You have to test that out a little bit. I'll move on to the mag to hit a couple of the other features because like I said, these have the same features. 
They both have our Badlands bow hook on the bottom here. Uh, if you haven't used it, you might think it's a little chintzy, a little silly, but once you start using it, you're going to find yourself using it all the time and wanting it all the time. So when that's mounted to your chest, you can slip your D-loop of your bow through there so your bow's hanging horizontally and it'll just hang there. Uh, the four-point shoulder strap harness takes all that weight, distributes it across your shoulders and chest, and you really don't even really feel the tug of that bow all that much. So it's super awesome. Uh, we shoot a lot of the total archery events, uh, other 3D shoots and stuff. When you're glassing or kind of just waiting around, you don't want to hold your bow, you slip it on there, go hands free. Uh, super awesome feature, the Badlands bow hook. Again, other than that, uh, about the same features. This is the full magnetic closure version, Bino Mag. Again, that rare earth magnet, watertight, dust tight seal. Um, the other thing these have that I didn't touch on yet is a built in lens cloth on a bungee cord, so you can get that out, clean up the glass, and then it has its own little stuff pocket here to shove it back in when you're done. Bino Mag, been in uh, the lineup probably the longest, like I said. One of our originals, still one of our best sellers. If you're just running binos and running some sort of rangefinder attachment on the side, uh, this could be a great option for you. Again, 10 by 50, some a little bit bigger is going to max that thing out. Moving on to our last case that's not uh, rangefinder integrated, the Bino X is going to be our overall biggest case as far as one big storage compartment inside. You can see the side profile there. It's going to stick out further than our other cases, and it's really just deeper and more cavernous than um, any of the other cases. The Bino X, X is for that extra large. Anything oversized binocular wise, uh, if you have some of those big old monster binoculars because you need them or you just like to have that extra glass power, this is probably where you're going to want to be. Uh, a lot of those bigger rangefinder uh, binocular combos are going to go in here. Uh, again, a magnetic zip no closure, but a little bit different. This thing magnetizes in a couple different spots. So it catches in the middle. You can open it part way if you want and then the magnets catch again on top. So it's a nice, easy drop down, use your glass. You don't have to worry about that slap and shut or anything. It's gonna hang till you're ready. Bring it up, you're good to go. Let me throw our biggest bino in here, that uh, Razor 10 by 50, just to show you how much space is still in that case. You could go about twice as deep as that bino is there and a lot taller in that bino case and still have plenty of space. Again, built-in lens cloth built-in tethers. As far as a pocket on this one, you have one mesh pocket against the back that you can put something in behind your binoculars. Uh, no storage on the lid itself. Um, and again, attachment points on the side, four point shoulder strap harness. The Bino X, the big boy of the lineup. Moving into our rangefinder compatible bino cases, both these cases are going to feature separate binocular and rangefinder compartments. So let's hit the XR first, one of our best sellers for the last few years, Bino XR. Uh, the X is because it's roughly the same size as the Bino X, if you took this other stuff off of it. Um, but R, we added the rangefinder, Bino XR. So that same flip down system that you get with the Bino X. Shoulder strap harness, that same back pocket there, built in uh, lens cloth cleaner, built in tethers. Where you really differ here is you bottom out about right there. There's a Velcroed in shelf on the inside um, that is movable, has four pieces of Velcro around every side. You can undo that, move it up or down depending on the size of your binoculars so that you can separate your binos and your rangefinder compartments. So you get that sitting where you want, and then you have your rangefinder compartment here on the bottom. So uh, this is a small Nikon Pro Staff. Let me throw that one in there. You can see it just closes right up. Nice secure closure. We do have a tether and always recommend tethering in your rangefinder as well. And then let's put that, let's try one of these other ones. This is a uh, Burris Drop Tine 8x42 up top. Plenty of space there, great closure, plenty of space for those. Let me do a Vortex Bino here, a little bit bigger. Um, you could go 
I'll try this one. Viper HD 10 by 50. Still plenty of height there. Easy closure. So 10 by 50s are even gonna fit in here. Uh, this razor is a little bit taller, but I did adjust that shelf a little bit down and um, I can close that no problem. So Razor 1050, a lot of 10 by 50s are gonna fit in here with a range finder. Word of caution, if you run a bigger range finder, that's where you'll start to run into a little bit of space issues. Uh, I run this Razor HD 4000 um, range finder and uh, it's a little tight with this combo. So it'll still shut and it's pretty snug. Um, that's about as big as you can get away with with this is my 10 by 50 binocular up top and that HD 4000 uh, range finder in the bottom. This is pretty much the system I run most of the time personally and uh, fits well and works well for me. Anything bigger on the bino or the range finder you might start running into a little bit of space issues. But that's also on the bigger end of the spectrum as far as range finders go. Bino XR, you also get zippered side pockets with hidden daisy chain on the outside. If you want to go even further out and attach stuff on the outside, you can do that. These zippered pockets come in handy so much. I always have a wind check in there, um, calls, all sorts of things I jam in there, uh, candy, snacks. Uh, I just find myself using these all the time. You also get a rear pocket here, right up against your body. Perfect cell phone pocket. I almost always have my phone stuffed back in there. Uh, even some tags, licenses type stuff go back in there. And another cool feature, zippered on the back is a removable rain cover. If you wanna go 100% waterproof for your binos in those heavy, heavy, heavy downpours and you just don't um, feel good about having any sort of exposure there, throw that over the top and you're 100% waterproof uh, for your binoculars until that storm passes and then uh, take it back off, stuff it back in the pocket, you're ready to go. So very cool, a lot of features on the XR. Um, does not have the Badlands bow hook, so keep that in mind when you're doing your shopping. And again, that is removable if you don't want that in there, but you really don't feel it much up against your chest. Badlands Bino XR, available in all three colors and patterns. Last but certainly not least, the Bino D Mag. So D stood for Deluxe. We packed this full of features. Um, our newest, latest, greatest case, the D Mag. Uh, similar to the XR in that it has a rangefinder and binocular compartment separated by the Velcro shelf, but this has the full rare earth uh, magnet all the way around the outside, dust tight, water tight. A uh, little bit of a different opening that way. The XR and the X drop all the way down, and that flap kind of hangs there. Uh, this one just kind of opens um, and gives you quick, easy access. Again, let's throw that 10 by 50 razor in there. That's about as tall as I'd want to go on these again. Uh, I'd probably even maybe go a little bit smaller on these, a lot of 10 by 42s, maybe a smaller 10 by 50. That's a pretty big 1050. Uh, this Viper 10 by 50 fits a little bit better. Again, you get that nice tight seal, nice easy closure. And then let's try a different range finder here on the bottom. A uh, popular model is that Vortex Ranger, that thrown in the bottom there. Get that closure again when you're in the field, it's quick, easy access. Drop it back in there, get the magnetic seal tight, you're good to go. Uh, again, movable shelf on the inside. Down here, you do have that tether, like we talked about, and it has its own little pocket. You can stuff that tether away when you're not using it so it's not getting in your way. Uh, zippered pocket up front on the D-Mag instead of on the sides like the Bino XR. You're gonna get a pocket and then one more pocket on the inside of that one. Again, great for phone, uh, other stuff. And then a big uh, pocket on the back as well. Get, again, perfect phone pocket. We've even seen people conceal um, or carry a small pistol in there as well. Uh, other than that, yeah, built-in lens cloth again. Uh, one mesh pocket on the back of that one. And we did include the bow hook on the D-Mag. And that one is available in all three colors and patterns as well. Whew, D-Mag, XR, Bino X, Mag Bino, Bino Z, and Bino C is our Bino case lineup. 
Another one we have in the lineup that's extremely popular when you want to go a little more minimalistic and you don't need that full 100% binocular coverage. Um, maybe you're not, maybe you're just out scouting, maybe you're out riding around on the side by side, um, doing something a little less rigorous, you don't need full coverage. Our Bino Basics Bino Straps, uh, very simple. Again, it's that four point harness, but uh, we have some bungee straps built in here. So again, um, sorry I didn't dress the mannequin. I got kind of lazy. I, I, he has a nice physique though. I, I thought he might want to show it off. Uh, so again, that's just quick, easy. These straps just kind of, those aren't staying where they should, but these will just bend. Use your binoculars, drop them back into place. It keeps it tight enough to your body where they're not flapping around. Uh, but again, just super popular item. The Bino Basics harness uh, comes in a couple different colors. Super simple, comes with the clips and we include the rings as well. So you just throw your binos on there and you're good to go. The Bino Basics. The last accessory in the binocular uh, lineup, you might say, is our Bino Connect system. These have been extremely popular. Every time we get them back in stock, they blow out immediately. But a lot of our new packs, uh, all the newest styles and all our latest styles, 2200, Super Day, Vario, all the MRK packs that are coming later this year, everything we're doing from now on is Bino Connect compatible. So let me grab the MRK we showed you in the last episode. Any pack you have that has this strap across the shoulder, shoulder strap that says Bino on it is gonna be Bino Connect compatible. And you'll see it again down here on the bottom. Usually it's a red strap, but not always it'll say Bino or something. That's for Bino Connect. What the Bino Connect is, is it comes bundled as four straps that you attach to your pack. You can just leave them on there. They're not all that intrusive, but it goes up and under that strap, clicks back over the top and hooks in nice and tight. Not gonna go anywhere. I couldn't even, you gotta fiddle with that quite a bit to get it off there. So nice and secure. And what that gives you is four connection points for your Bino case to click in to where you don't, should have taken the Bino out of this. Yeah, there we go. You no longer have to run two shoulder harnesses if you don't want to. You just buckle these in, in the four points, the four straps that the system comes with, adjust where you need it to be up and down, plenty of adjustment there. And you have your Bino case strapped to your chest and your backpack without having to run two cases. Again, a lot of people are running this. Um, if you're not somebody who drops their backpack a lot to, to run off, if you're pretty much always wearing your pack and your Bino case, why not ditch the extra set of shoulder straps, go with the Bino Connect system. It's super simple, super easy. It comes with uh, our newer style of buckle already on it, and then we actually include four extra buckles in case you have an older style Badlands pack or Bino case that is still running some older buckle styles. So we cover you in all aspects, comes in a nice little bungee case, and uh, again, covered for life. It's four pieces, if one walks off, you're left with three, we're gonna take care of you, make sure you always have four of those and you're taken care of. So the Bino Connect system, look for Bino Connect capability on your packs. If you have it, you might wanna pick one of those up. Whew. God, Larry, I, uh, he really only has one job here and that's to remind me to put my water cup on the table before we start shooting. And uh, he just failed miserably in this case. So I'll just stay up here and be parched and uh, sweaty and gross. So blame Larry for that. That is hopefully a good comprehensive Bino case and accessory review for you, uh, watch it through a couple times, hit up the website. As far as specs and dimensions and weights and all that stuff, it can be found on the website underneath all these products. We have so many dealers nationwide uh, who carry our binocular cases. And uh, stop in, check them out. Stop in, check out your local shop. If they don't have them, ask them to get some on the shelf. Um, we want you hitting up those shops, hitting up those retailers, and uh, pulling these off the shelf. That's, uh, that's what we're looking for. So. Uh, if, we have, if you have any questions about these, you can obviously uh, hit us up at the Rack Attack email as well, down below, and uh, we'll answer any questions we can. Hopefully that, uh, that took care of some things. Uh, on top of my rambling, we wanted to show you just a few ways that the Badlands uh, pro staff and some of our guys are just running Badlands gear all the time, uh, how they're using their bino cases and accessories and bino basics and all that. So. 
Uh, we have a couple uh, videos they sent in to show you and share with you some tips, tricks, uh, how they're doing it and uh, all that good stuff. So let's take a look at those and see what those guys have to say. Hey Rack Attack, my name is Henry Ferguson and Blake asked me to talk to you a little bit about the Bino system that I've been using for a number of years. You'll notice I don't use a traditional Bino harness, an enclosed Bino harness. And the biggest reason I don't is I do a lot of spot and stock mule deer hunting and when I'm up close, you know, within 20 to 40 yards on these animals, I want to be able to get those binos up and down absolutely silently. No noise at all from, and nothing to fumble with. Why I have used the Bino Basics for a number of years. This set's about three years old and they are absolutely awesome. They have a little bit stronger elastic here than most, so it keeps them in tight to your chest and then the nice wide shoulder straps. But one last little trick that I have here is you'll notice I am actually not using a metal uh, loop to hold and connect these binoculars to the cord. What I'm actually using is a little bit of D-loop material and I just tie a little square knot on there. Use that on like, learn that on like day one of Boy Scouts. And a little dab of glue on there to keep those secure and they're all set and ready to go. And then I just uh, keep my Range finder, you'll see that I've just got this tied on with parachute cord and everything is out of the other item's way. This system's worked real well for me for a number of years and I'll bet it'd work real well for you as well. Hey, what's up, Blake? I just wanted to share with you my setup and the Bino harness that I run and that is the Badlands uh, Bino XR case. Been my favorite for a while. I had it in a different color, but I was super pumped when uh, Badlands came out with the new mud color. So I, of course, had to order it right away. Big fan of the new mud color. Uh, it's got the zippered pockets here. Um, being an outdoor videographer and photographer in the outdoor industry, I put my batteries, I got AA rechargeables and camera batteries in that pocket as well. Uh, obviously the main compartment, got my binos. And with this case, it can snap down. So that way I got quick, easy, access to uh, the binos and pockets got the wind checker in there super easy uh, quick access really enjoy those side pocket features rangefinder pocket definitely big enough for a good size range pocket i'm also able to fit in a uh, cow call in there and then uh, obviously you can see that i got my rangefinder in there as well so yeah lots of pockets really enjoy the Bino XR case from Badlands. Blake, you rock, you sexy beast. Hope you all have a great day. What's up, Blake? What's up, Rack Attack? Uh, Kyle Green, one of the Badlands operative guys. I've got my little hunting buddy, Colin, here. Colin, you wanna say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> to talk about uh, Bino cases. Um, pretty much don't leave home without one if we're going in the woods. We took a Bino C. Colin, you got your Bino case? Hold on just a second, let me show them how we've made it fit you. So we took a Bino C, basically reversed the straps, rolled it up, taped it, um, for it to fit little man, cause he just had to have one. Got your glasses. Hey, my dad, they're all <laughs> So we get a nice fit. Is it comfortable? Yeah. Okay, what do you got in here, buddy? That's your monocular, your flashlight. Yep, that works. Fruit roll up, that's a that's a must. Granola bar, miniature Millennium Falcon, that's a must. Stormtrooper. He's got his cleaning wipes and his knife. Um, every time we're out, he takes this with him. Um, you can fit a 10 by 42, a smaller binocular in there, and it's fine. Uh, early season, I'll use that if he's not using it. Hey, Rack Attack viewers, it is Alex from The Rise. We're out here shooting some arrows tonight, just getting ready for fall, but I want to talk a little bit about the Bino harness that I run from Badlands. It is the Bino Basics. 
Um, this one is the one I prefer. I am self-filming and hanging and hunting so much that the lighter, the simpler the setup, the better for me. So that's why I choose this one. One thing I really love about it is the wider straps up top. This really helps it from getting tangled when you toss in your pack or in your bag after the end of hunt. You just pull it right out, toss it on, you're good to go. A lot of the other ones I've run in the past get tangled really easy and that's super frustrating. So that's the biggest key for this one that I love. I've been running it for years. So if you're in the market for new harness, check this one out. Hey Blake, you know, I've used just about every bino harness you guys have made and you know, they're perfect for keeping your binos out of the elements and in hand's reach. But the one thing that I cannot leave the house without that I keep in here 24 seven is my card case. You know, whether it's a Sunday afternoon, I'm riding around with dad checking trail cameras. You know, I always have my binos with me, so I'll always have my card case. Or, you know, as hunters, we try to alleviate as much pressure as we can in our hunting location. So if I can have my card case in my bino harness, I could easily grab the card out of my camera after a morning or evening hunt and have little to no pressure. Thank you all for sending those videos in. Super helpful. I know for me, it's always better to hear from somebody actually using gear in the field uh, rather than just watching some bumbling idiot who's getting paid to say a bunch of stuff in front of a camera. So listen to those guys if you're not going to listen to me. Um, but not, on, not only am I a bumbling idiot, I do hunt heavily and use the gear as well. So you, you can trust me. I have a trustworthy face. Uh, just ask my wife. I don't know what that means. Um, that's going to pretty much wrap us up for our giveaway this week. Uh, t -t 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 Colin Stultzifus. I know that's how you say his last name because I know somebody uh, with that same last name. I'm pretty sure that's it. Colin is going to take home the bino case of his choice. Uh, he said he might buy one. Well, Maybe he did already. If he didn't, he's going to take one home for free for having the awesome suggestion to review the bino cases today. Uh, we actually did this on season one if you want to go back and look, but uh, we've had new styles since then. Thought this needed a good update and refresh. So congratulations, Colin. Nathaniel Melton's also going to take home a Badlands Rack Attack swag package for his uh, recommendation uh, to bring up the new segment of the Badlands Graveyard. We hope you enjoyed that. To enter the giveaway for this episode uh, we're going to give away some more stuff uh, let's see we'll give away another bino case of choice to a lucky viewer of this episode what do you have to do to win comment below like the video subscribe uh, usually we pick a comment whether it's somebody suggesting a segment or something we can do on rack attack asking a question any of those things just interacting with us below is going to get you entered to win something from us here at rack attack we love interacting I hop in those comment sections and try to reply to almost everybody. Uh, if you don't believe me, go back to the last episode. I think I commented on almost every comment. So my fingers were bleeding when I was done, but it was, uh, it was fun to interact with you there. That's about it for Badlands. Rack attack. I'm sweating in here. I'm going to be sweating worse when I step outside. It's nasty out there. But uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with us today. Please share the videos. Uh, if you like watching Rack Attack, share it with a friend. Tell somebody so we can get those views up, uh, keep us motivated to keep slogging in here and uh, making episodes for you. We love it, we love interacting, we love all your uh, comments and everything. So like, comment, subscribe below. We're gonna catch you next time right here on Badlands Rack Attack.